What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Spread, Nesson.com's Football Picks Podcast. I'm Nesson.com's Mike Cole, joined, as always, by Andre Katastori. And on my left, Ricky Doyle. On my right, gentlemen, how are we? Hey, we're doing great. Doing well. Good. Doing well. good. Very cold outside. And it's, uh, it is a pretty tough time of the year right now. It's dark earlier than we are used to it. Uh, we're finally starting to see a little wintry precipitation. Uh, and it is colder than you know what. And it's only going to get colder. Yeah, I mean, it's that time of year where the weather gets colder. Although I was... Uh, I was just saying to you, too, it was never light out today. It was dark. I know. The sun I, didn't come up. It was like the redeeming grace. It's somebody who <laughs> wakes wrote up, that song is so full of it. I, uh, <laughs> I wake up very early, and like that's been the nice thing in the winter is when it finally changes over. It's like, oh, this isn't the worst thing. I woke up this morning, yeah. And it was like, this is darker than when I went to bed. It doesn't make um, any sense. Yeah, Ricky and I are still in the softball league, and the playoffs are, are next week, and it's going to be in the mid-30s. So we're supposed to warm up a little bit next week, but uh, it's good weather talk. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, I was looking at the, uh, speaking of the weather, I was looking at the NFL weather for this weekend. Uh, it didn't look like a whole lot of inclement stuff. I think it's going to warm up a little bit, or we're just going to miss the really, really cold spots. Uh, we're not, I don't think we're going to get a repeat of Packers-Panthers. I was going to say, was, that was fun. That was to fun. To get a little weather at yeah. the end of that mm-hmm. game. Just enough, too, where it was... Yeah, it wasn't a like slippery. it wasn't. I mean, we've had some weather earlier this year. The Redskins 49ers game it was a wet game. Yeah, that was that was all rain. I like the rain. I, that's like that. Uh, the rain actually enjoy more than rain on grass. Also, you another reason why there's no weather. This is so ridiculous. The, there's three dome games this week and four games in California. So yeah, I was gonna say it seems like no the Mexico weather. City game. Oh, sorry, well, Mexico City. Right. Yeah. Correct. Packers are off. We'll Giants are off. The Patriots on the road. So yeah. All right, that's <laughs> scintillating weather talk. Just, uh, just paint on the scene. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so now we will, uh, at a certain point here, if we ever get done talking about the weather, uh, we'll make our picks for the three, well, two best games of the weekend. <laughs> uh, we might pick one out of a hat. We'll do locks, upsets, and then we will hit the dusty trail uh, to go deal with the weather as we will. So but first, the records. Yeah, last let's week. see how we did last week. Week 10 came and week 10 went, and just like always, Ricky dominated. Uh, eight, four, and one, and Mike, you and I went six, six, and one. So Ricky just continues to build his lead. Sure, I needed a bounce back after last. Week. I was gonna say, you did. It was like very, four of your last five weeks down. have been extremely dominant. Short-term yeah. memory loss yeah. for Andre. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm like five hundred this week. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I had yeah. a great year last year. You can't. Oh my god. <laughs> They great larger sample size. Yeah. For this. <laughs> Wait, what? He's really digging back for the largest sample size when it comes to this. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you know, so the, uh, as long as, uh, at least I'm not under 500. Yeah, sure. Right. Although you, you are, might be a game under. 500. You're exactly 500 in the spread. That's this year, year. So I'm that's you know you take like what Switzerland. You can get. I'm just neutral. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, before we get into the games, uh, we did pretty well last week in terms of uh, views on YouTube. So thank you to the people watching on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, uh, leave a comment. Maybe your best picks of the week. Uh, maybe some a constructive GIF. criticism. What? Maybe a GIF or something. Maybe a, yeah. <laughs> can you do that on YouTube? I don't, comments? I don't think you, you can. can. Link out to it. Yeah, sure. We'll <laughs> click on it. So if you want to send us a virus, that's a, <laughs> that's a good deal. I'll check it out. Uh, give it a thumbs up. I don't really know what that does for us other than uh, you know, pat our virus. ego. That's fine too. If you're listening on. Uh, iTunes, make sure you rate, review, subscribe if you haven't already to the Nesson Podcast Network. There's a lot going on there. Uh, make sure you're giving us positive feedback, uh, no negative feedback. We don't like that. It hurts our feelings. So <laughs> with that being said, let's get into the week 11 slate. Uh, we will start Sunday afternoon with the Houston Texans. Uh, go on the road to take on the Baltimore Ravens. The Texans coming off of their bye, uh, whereas the Ravens, uh, one of the hottest teams in football. You can make me even a case I, I wouldn't, but maybe somebody would put them atop their power Someone rankings. In the this week. you know mid Atlantic region, probably. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the Ravens, obviously, two weeks ago beating the Patriots, uh, a classic letdown spot Sunday afternoon, and they just go in and say what letdown and just run all over the the Cincinnati Bengals. So as it stands right now, the Ravens are four point favorites at home against Houston. This is a Sunday afternoon game. Total set at 49 and a half, and it looks like two thirds of the public, as it stands right now, on Baltimore. Weather not an issue. Ricky, who do you like? So it's funny you mentioned the the letdown spot because I, I was fully anticipating that against any team other than the Bengals. Yeah, right. Like I, I went into last week like not seeing the slate yet and thinking that we were probably going to get the letdown, and then you factor in that Bengals. Cincinnati is arguably the worst team in football with the rookie quarterback making his debut. I mean, just a 
a collection of uh, reasons to, to not expect a letdown in the long run. So I think we get another delayed letdown here. <laughs> I think it, it, two weeks <laughs> later after the, uh, the victory over the, the Patriots and obviously the, the bloodbath against Cincinnati, uh, I like the Texans. A lot of this stems from the fact that, and we've mentioned this several times throughout the season, I like Baltimore a lot more when I'm getting points. I like them in that underdog role. Um, you look at it, the numbers sort of bared out 3 10 1 against the spread in their last 14 games as favorites. And I do think that uh, the Texans, uh, from an offensive standpoint at least, are going to be able to keep up with this team. Uh, you know, I, I think that their, uh, you know, their success rate in early downs factor in, you know, you talk a lot about yards per play differential, pretty similar with these two teams. Um, so I do. I, I think it's going to be a situation where maybe we're getting a little too high on the Ravens, and ultimately this, this ends up being a close game. I agree with you, Ricky. It's a lot of the same reasons you said. Um, it, you know, Houston, um, they, they also do well against tight ends. Uh, they allow 366 receiving yards to tight ends. Mark Andrews is having a fantastic year this year, and that the, the that's the fifth fewest amount of yards to tight ends the Texans have allowed. And uh, you know, the Ravens are such a great rushing team. The Texans have only faced 23 rush attempts from quarterbacks this year uh, for 119 yards. 90 of those 119 yards were in two games against Gardner Minshew. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, I guess they're going to get face probably. Uh, 20 rushing attempts from yeah. this this week's quarterback and Lamar Jackson, but maybe there's something to be said about them doing well against other uh, running quarterbacks, mobile quarterbacks that they faced uh, that they faced this year. And I think if they do a good job of somewhat containing Lamar Jackson and forcing him to win with his arm, which he has done this year, but again he had those couple games where he threw five picks in two games in that stretch, he has shown uh, that he can be flawed. Maybe uh, Houston covers that spread. Again, you, you said you like Baltimore when they're getting points. I like Houston when they're getting points, too. And in this case, they are. Cool. Uh, make it three. I'll take Houston as well. I thought it might be not on an island here, but I'm surprised none of us are taking Baltimore. Uh, but, hey, we're sharp as it gets. Um, <laughs> I do like, uh, Ricky, you touched on it real quickly, early down success uh, that uh, Houston has had, especially defensively. They're very good, uh, you know, against – the run and the pass in those uh, in first and second down, uh, which is where you know Baltimore needs to have success. I think it's telling that you know the two teams that have done the best job against uh, Baltimore this year, Kansas City and Cleveland. You get them into a third down situation, they went nine for twenty-three in third down in those games. So if you're getting them into a, you know a third and eight, it becomes a lot more difficult. As long as you can contain the pocket and don't let uh, Lamar Jackson run wild, you should be okay. Because that's where I think where he you know obviously struggles the most is where it not. You know, gets a little off schedule. He's got to throw the ball those intermediate routes. He seems to have some struggles with those still. So that's something to keep in mind as well. I thought this was kind of interesting and a little bit surprising, to be honest with you. Bill O'Brien, after the bye for his career, 4-1 uh, straight up and 4-1 and one against the spread. Uh, somewhat uh, conversely, Harbaugh with uh, John Harbaugh with rest disadvantage. And his career is just 21-18, and 19-18-2 uh, against the spread. Houston, obviously, uh, the, the bye could not have come at a better time for them, they're going to get Laramie Tunsil back. They got Titus Howard back, I think, before the bye. Looks like Will Fuller's going to give it a go. Kiki Kuti, uh, Bradley Roby in the secondary, Tayshawn Gibson. I mean, the list goes on and on. They are as healthy as they've been in a long time. And I also, you know, Baltimore, not a, this, to Ricky's point, you know, you like them better getting points. 0-6 uh, against the spread in their last six as a home favorite. 1-4 uh, and four against the spread in the last five home games versus teams with winning records, whereas Houston 4-1 and one against the spread in, in the last five as an underdog and the last five road games. So a lot of trends to like as well there. So You, you look at the, you know, Watson used to get sacked a ton. Yeah. The last five games he's only taken seven sacks. We've talked about his uh, release time yeah. and how that's improved, and um, I don't see why that shouldn't continue to be the trend, especially as you mentioned that they're getting – Tunsil back and getting healthier. Their offensive line should be better as the uh, I mean, season progresses. That Ravens, the Ravens defense is actually, I think, coming along nicely, but they still don't is, get they, after the they, quarterback. They, they don't, and let's not be fooled by that. They played the Bengals twice in the last four games, so maybe it's inflated. I also think uh, that Patriots offense has some issues, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I think we've, we've touched on that yeah. before, but they're just not the same team they've been in the years. Well, that, that was still an impressive victory. Somewhat related. <laughs> I was going back to, to look up uh, something for my, my, my bookkeeping earlier, and I was watching our Week 9 episode where Andre and I got into a huge uh, shouting match, and Andre gives me a, you think they're really going to score seven or 27 points against uh, the Patriots? They scored 37, <laughs> hey, so yeah. swing and a miss. 
We could do that with everybody. I just thought it was interesting. It so. was uh, that, that was a shocking game. Do you think? Uh, do we think Baltimore is the second best team in the AFC? And I, does I, this I game change that at all? If the if Houston wins, I still think Houston is like you, maybe they're not the second best team, but hey, this is a team that beat the Chiefs. Uh, they're a very good team. They got a good, they got they're a very complete team. So here's the thing: the only issue I have with this is like I think Baltimore is much better coach too. Yeah. So that's something See, that I think like the special teams they have a huge advantage. Like I said, coaching's I think pretty big advantage. I think when the, when they crash, they're gonna crash hard though. Yeah, get one come. Oh, we saw it last time. year. Like I, yeah. they might get their the, they might get blown out in the the second round. Yeah, so like that's AFC the thing. I mean, they're probably gonna have to go to if I mean, we're getting way ahead of ourselves, but if if it's in the AFC Championship, they're almost certainly gonna have to go. I know they had the game in hand, but I like the Patriots' chances better of finishing out that season, getting the one seed, oh, and yeah. I do Baltimore. So like them, I could see them going to New England and being down fourteen nothing midway through the second quarter. It's like, oh Christ, how do we do this? <laughs> But again, I don't. I also don't see Houston going there. And the thing with Baltimore, too I still is, think maybe it's Kansas City. To be honest with you, is I, I don't know how good they they are at uh, coming back in a game. Like if, that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, like in an instance like that, I thought it was pretty interesting, even as it relates to this matchup. So the Ravens are second in the NFL in first quarter points per game, and the Texans are 31st in first quarter points per game. Wow. So, I mean, obviously, if you're Houston, you you got to weather the storm early here. Yeah. And it's, so that's why I could see this game sort of being like that week six game against the Chiefs where, like, the Chiefs came out and punched them in the mouth yeah. early. It was like 17-3, to three, and then Houston rattled off like 20 unanswered points. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think, you know, if, if a situation – if that unfolds in the, the first quarter where Baltimore does come out, I trust Houston's ability to, to get back in the game at least. Yeah. Whereas if it's the other way around and Houston comes out quick – I don't know if Baltimore can get back in it. We even saw that in the Patriots game where, like, you know, they came out and hit the Patriots in the mouth. But yeah. New England kind of figured it out eventually. There was a couple of drives late, and obviously the, the fumble killed them. But, you know, it's, that game was it's closer like a, than the final score. an element of, I don't know if it's surprise because you sort of know what you're getting into. It's like they're really good at game plan. When you play, yeah, when you play the Ravens, I think you know, like, you're going to get the, the heavy dose in yep. the ground game and whatnot. But to actually see it unfold in front of you, it's... It's like there's some shock value. Yeah, and it's, it. a, it's a different Weird. style than you're used to dealing with too. So, a lot of things to keep in mind there. All right, anything else? No. Sunday afternoon, late Sunday afternoon. Uh, I have one more thing: Texans, all their losses by one Literally. possession. <laughs> Get your heart no. <laughs> they, they keep games close. All their losses by one possession. Good to know. Yeah. So you're getting points. Take the Texans. All That's right. True. I think the Texans. I think it's gonna be. <laughs> I think it's gonna be similar to the uh, the, the game that they played against uh, Jacksonville as well. Because you mentioned Gardner Minshew, and like it was very clear that they were making a concerted effort to keep him in the pocket. Yeah. Which I think is what you're gonna try. It has to, to be a game well. plan. Yeah. So right. now oh. we're done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, late Sunday afternoon, 4:25 p.m. Uh, New England Patriots head to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles for a Super Bowl rematch that really doesn't has any no bearing whatsoever. Uh, those things are not connected, although we will hear all week about it. Uh, but that is the way it goes in the sports media business. Uh, the Patriots coming off of their bye, as is Philly. Uh, looks like two-thirds of the public right now are on the Patriots, uh, giving three and a half points as it stands right now. This is You can get it three in some places, but I imagine you know, if, that, if they're going to continue to get the money, that the, this line will be right around three and a half, maybe even four by kickoff. We'll go three and a half for the uh, purpose of this. Uh, whether or not an issue as well here. So, Andre, what do you like? I, I love the the Patriots. Uh, they're, okay. It's only three and a half points. I know that was it only is. three and a half points against the Ravens, <laughs> and I ended up eating crap after after that <laughs> game. I'll be honest. You could say, well, I did. I, I, oh, you did, yeah. No, You're a smart man. But, you know, I you say... You say two years ago it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> yeah. I think it matters. Tom Brady said that he's Malcolm still Butler not over... Malcolm Butler going to play in this game, finally? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, Tom Brady said, you know, he still remembers that loss. No, I... It, he's sure. not over the loss. But, like... And there's a lot of Patriots from that team that are still on this year's team. They all remember it. it has, I, they're not going to say about it. They remember like, it. They all they, remember I, it. I, yeah, sure. But, like, they didn't... It's not like I don't think they hate the Eagles... And I also don't think, like... It's a game they should have won that they lost. Yeah, but nothing they can do Sunday is going to change that. 
I know, but at least they can. Whatever. We're having, this is just like so. A, for a team that's, we constantly praise for being able to block the outside distractions and whatnot. Like the, yeah, the yeah. negative is all yeah. of a sudden gonna. Yeah. Whatever you can. back on something. That bulletin years, board you know. material. We well, talk about the Patriots well, so all the time. Like that's the thing, right? It's like the sign says, "Ignore the noise when you walk out the building." But when yeah, you come in the next day, it's on the goddamn bulletin and board. Gonna blow trumpets and yeah. make a lot of noise. Whoa! <laughs> you can't. So all right. You can't talk crap about the Patriots. You guys don't like that. Or you can drop keep some more knowledge. The no, Patriots. No, I'm not, I, have, I have no issue with your point. I just thought it was interesting. 13 and I 4. Sure Patriots 13 and 4 with Brady after a bye. Yeah. Uh, average margin of victory in their 14 wins with Bill Belichick after a bye is 17.4 points. Um, and since 2003, they're 40 and 16 against the spread after a loss. The Patriots, sorry. That's against the spread, not, not overall. Against the spread. Four, 40 and 16. 71.4% coverage with a margin of victory of 12 points. And the Eagles, their yards per play, they're 25th in the league, or 23rd in the league, sorry. And the Patriots still have the best defense in terms of yards allowed per play. They're just going to struggle to move the ball. Patriots are better rested. Well, they're not. They're both coming off a bye. But <laughs> they, actually, got the they had a better sleep, though. They're not as rested because they played Sunday night. Well, the yeah, Eagles you're right. They're not as well rested. But, <laughs> but, the, uh, I mean, I <laughs> Everything I said still. Yeah, stuck. no, I got it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, th this is a game where I feel like I could look very stupid in hindsight for the reasons that you mentioned. You know, we've seen this time and time again that the Patriots are so good after both a bye and after a loss. I mean, this is kind of, you know, you're adding two factors to the mix here. Um, but it's still just uh, looking at this year's versions of each team um, and just the fact that I mentioned the offensive struggles that the Patriots have had. Uh, just not it hasn't looked you know that's the one area where they're not really the same team as they were from that that Super Bowl uh, matchup. I just think the Eagles are sort of they're built to to make this a difficult game for them. Very similar to like what the what Baltimore did. I think the Eagles are going to be able to run the ball. I think they'll control the clock and turn wearing down that defense a little bit. Um, and you look at the where the Eagles might have a distinct advantage here is in the trenches, both on the offensive and defensive side. So uh, I'm getting points from the a home team that's at the very least a you know a, a tough opponent it should know? be more desperate they so should it be just ready yeah. to go with that it, coach it feels to me if i'm picking the patriots i feel like i'm i'm making that based on the the trends and just like the, the overall body of work in the last two decades as opposed yeah. to the personnel with these these two teams so i'm gonna i'm gonna take the eagles and i'm gonna take the points uh i don't feel great about it but i just i, I do think that you know, they have the, the personnel to, to get out the Tom Brady up front, which we've seen can cause a lot of problems, particularly this season. Uh, and I do think the Eagles are going to be able to run the ball on offense. And just say before you give your pick, yeah. the Eagles wins this year, 400 wins. Redskins, Luke Falk, I mean, Josh Allen, and Mitch Trubisky. So the, or, the, 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 the exact the same as the Patriots other than Trubisky? I know, the Patri but I just Luke trust Falk, the Patriots more. Redskins, Josh Allen. What about their other ones? Uh, they, they, their other one was against the Packers. Right. <laughs> it was a Thursday night game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like, <laughs> whenever they play a formidable opponent, you're going to say the same thing about the Patriots. Whenever they play, <laughs> they, they've played multiple formidable opponents. They got blown out of the water by the Vikings and Cowboys. Like, yeah. they're, I mean, they're not consistent. I, I, okay. They have a negative yards to play differential. Yeah. They're yeah. not a good team. I don't think the Eagles are a good team. Okay. Uh, I disagree. I am higher on the Eagles than you are, quite clearly. Uh, I will yield that they have been far too inconsistent to be on the level of a Super Bowl contender as it stands right here in the middle of November, but I still believe in their ability to get consistent and get going. I think this week they take a step in doing that. Therefore, I'm taking the points, and I will take the Eagles. And I'm with Ricky. I will say I don't feel great about it, but I guess that's you know whoever won a bet feeling good about it. The, you know, the best bets are the ones that you usually feel I the think worst that about. Walks terrible yeah, anyway. that's a good point. <laughs> um, so, Ricky, you know, you say you don't want to use you know the trends. You don't want to look at the trends going back 20 years, and that's understandable. And I agree with you. But let's go back two years, okay? Sure. So, dating back to the start of last season, the Patriots as a road favorite of a touchdown or less. You got that? Pretty easy. Okay. Uh, they are one in six straight up. One in six against the spread. That's Baltimore this year. Buffalo this year. That's the only straight up win. Uh, Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh last year at Tennessee 
Uh, I, then I must have done something wrong here because they won the Chicago game. So I guess they were two and six or two and five straight up. And then also the Detroit and Jacksonville game last year. So when they're short road favorites, they have struggled recently. If you want to go in the three to seven point range, you get a little more specific. They're one and three straight up, zero oh and four against the spread. So I don't know what that says other than that you know maybe the lines makers don't have a good grip on this team in those situations. Um, you look at Philly, the running game is starting to come along after that. Uh, you know, they got their heads kicked in at Dallas. Uh, they came back, really started to commit to the run. They've averaged 38 carries, 182 yards per game the last two weeks. That's 4.8 yards per carry. Uh, and the Patriots, you know, run issues have been well documented, uh, allowing 6.9 yards per carry the last two weeks. One win, one loss. You know, and I, I keep going back to that Cleveland game, and I don't want to harp on it too much, but if they don't fumble those two times, the game's a lot closer. Uh, and, and, you know, so now you're going on the road. It's going to be difficult. Uh, I also, th- you know, looking, I dug into the, some of the personnel stuff. The Eagles use 12 personnel, which is the one running back, uh, two, tight, or two tight ends, two receivers, uh, more than anybody else in the league. So they're averaging 4.2 yards per carry, a uh, 52% success rate per sharp football. Carson Wentz has 106 passer rating out of 12 personnel. The last two games against Cleveland and Baltimore, uh, the Patriots have faced, you know, it's, it hasn't been the predominant uh, formation that they've faced, but when, go, when, when the Browns or the Ravens used 12 personnel, they had an 89 point, or 89% success rate according to Sharp Football. Uh, they were getting seven, point yard, or seven yards per carry. That's only on eight carries, but I think it's you know, worth mentioning. Uh, and QBs, nine for 11, 110 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, 148 passer ratings. Uh, you know the, the Eagles pass out of that more than anybody else in the league. It's their it's it a is, great stat. And, I can also see the, the no, Patriots blowing them out. No, I, I I can too. I but I look at that the twelve thing. I think it is important because the one of the big issues that the Eagles do have is the receivers suck. So at least when they're in twelve, it allows them to have Ertz and Goder on the field at the same time. So it, maybe that presents some matchup trouble. Maybe they can bully the Patriots a little bit, try to win that possession battle. I think a lot of it comes back to, you know, they do things a little bit differently, but I think they can give the Patriots the same kind of problems that Baltimore did. You know, yeah, Carson Wentz isn't a generational. Different, but the strength's the same. Yeah, yeah, right. And, you know, Wentz isn't going to, you know, crack off a 65-yard run right. where he's juking people out of his shoes, but he can pick up a first down to extend a drive if he needs to. So, uh, again, I don't feel great about it, but... Uh, I just I think also too. think it's a lot of points. One more, one more thing before we move on. I just, you know, great the Eagles are on red zone offense, right? Carson Wentz yeah, they are fantastic. Very good, yeah. But the Patriots have allowed the fewest red zone score uh, get, opportunities. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think you keep them out of the it's red just, area. You force some field goals. And you need that maybe Patriots it's offense. Maybe after a bye week, they get it together. Maybe I'm being obtuse when it comes to the Patriots. It, but, like, again, Luke Falk doesn't, like, it doesn't – they weren't going to get into the red zone. You know, yeah. playing t- – teams like that weren't going to get in the red zone against no. them. They're so they, – they were going up against historically inept offenses. And, you know, I don't think the Eagles are like the, the 2,000 Rams or whatever, but you know, I think they're certainly more adept. I also like Doug Peterson. You know, I know people are kind of wondering if Frank Reich was maybe the glue holding them together, especially in that Super Bowl run, but – you know, he's going to go for it at midfield. He's not going to be afraid of the Patriots, very similarly to John Harbaugh, Harbaugh. last week. So. I was going to say, we've seen the success that he's had even, you know, dating back before the Eagles days, you know, in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. With this That's a good point. Sort yeah. of a, it's always been a, a bit of a thorn in their side. Um, I don't know. For me, I think a lot of it, too, is <laughs> offensively. It's just what the Patriots are going to be able to do offensively. Because I look at that Eagles team, you, obviously the weakness there is the secondary. Uh, it's improved a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's true. But I, mean, I, I don't know if the Patriots are equipped this time around to sort of slice and dice a team yeah. like they used to. I, I think this is a situation where, uh, you know, the, the Eagles can rush for and, and sort of cause problems. And, yeah. and, you know, it's this like the Eagles' 11th in sack percentage, but second only in the 49ers in the last three games. So I do think they're coming along defensively, much in the way sort of Baltimore is coming along defensively. I think you're, you're seeing that from Philadelphia as well. So you're grabbing the hat, though. Yeah, yeah well, I was just – I actually think it's – the one one of the things from the Super Bowl is – I just want to look it up real quick. Yeah, Rob Gronkowski, nine t- catches, 15 targets, 116 yards, two touchdowns. Don't think That's, he's playing Sunday. Yeah. But yeah, that was uh, that first drive after uh, halftime. Yeah. The Super Bowl, and they just realized, like, oh, yep. we have Rob Gronkowski. We should probably throw him the ball. Yeah. Although that – that Philly – Secondaries. I don't remember how good it was, but it had to have been better than the Philly secondary this year, just because it's not saying Maybe, much. Maybe, yeah. So, all right, 
on to our third game, uh, which we have not yet decided because, you know, you go look at the slate and try to find anything better than that. So we're going to get a little weird. We're going to pick it out of the hat here. Literally, pick it out of a This a is hat. the ultimate equalizer. Good uh, hat pick. And then we're just going to we're gonna wing it, which is not good because <laughs> I didn't do a ton of research on all the other games. But we're, we're smart enough to know. That I feel like this you guys hatched this plan together. And it just happens to come two weeks after I said I don't pay attention to any other games than what we're doing. <laughs> so it seems like a conspiracy no, to collude not. against he, me. He's but a first place guy. In general, not on the show. But hey, go ahead. Yeah. I think it's just a nice surprise treat for the audience. All right. Yes, of course. And the game oh. that we're going to pick is Cincinnati and Oakland. Oh. Oh. Man. We yeah, literally have not picked the worst. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I <laughs> you haven't talked about Cincinnati all year. I so wonder why. why. <laughs> so Cincinnati and Oakland. <laughs> What's uh, the spread? Well, I'm looking it up right now. I think it's, it's pretty 10. good, actually. You know, because we, we were kicking around Oakland the other day, even before the Chargers game, as to yeah. whether they – are they good? Yeah. You know, that's, that's a question we got to pose here. <laughs> so uh, we've got a Sunday afternoon game, 425. This game's taking place in uh, Oakland. The Raiders will host the Bengals as currently 10-point favorites. Uh, the game, the look-ahead odds had this at 8.5. That's obviously jumped up to 10. 10's a lot for the Raiders. Uh, while you guys are talking, I might look into when the last time the Raiders were <laughs> favored by 10 or more. It's got to have been a while ago. <laughs> I actually uh, I got that for you right here. Okay. Uh, so over the past 15 years, the Raiders have only been a double-digit favorite twice before this week. Uh, both in 2017, that was obviously the, the season where they, they were pretty good that year. It's like Derek Carr's MVP caliber yep. campaign. Um, in those games, they won both. Uh, they went just one-on-one -on -one against the spread. So Literally you means you nothing. But yeah. Whatever you want with that information. <laughs> but, yes, so twice in the past 15 years, the, this is uh, we've seen this situation. All right, Andre. I, I'll, go I'll ahead. start. I, I'm going to go with the Raiders. I'm going to take the points. I'm going to go with Oakland. Cincinnati. He's lay the points. I'm gonna, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, what did I say? Take the points. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, swallow the points. You know. Sure, yeah, you can <laughs> <laughs> do whatever you want. Swallow whatever you <laughs> want. Do anything but take them. <laughs> All right, I'm going with Oakland. Uh, Cincinnati's historically bad. Uh, you also look at their rush defense. It's terrible. What was that performance last, this yeah, entire yikes. season? And, you know, A.J. Green had that setback, so... Uh, Ryan Finley, poor guy. What a what a start to the <laughs> NFL. Just <laughs> young quarterback. Um, what did he, how did he do last week? Sixteen uh, of thirty. Sixteen of thirty against a not great, not amazing defense in Baltimore. Oakland's gonna be at home, and that and they've played a lot of home games lately. That's, they're finally home. They're on a yeah. friggin' two month road trip. Cincinnati also the worst yards to play differential in the league. Somehow they were able to, uh, I guess, surpass is the wrong word, but. They, uh, they're worse than Miami is, and Miami was historically bad in the first five weeks of the season. And somehow Cincinnati's even worse now. So um, yeah, I have uh, I do the I do not do the weekly power rankings for Nesson.com. I have since Cincinnati dead last. So. Yeah, it's and we all said we by a mile really at this point. Uh, um, also, Oakland's biggest weakness I think it's it's their like their pass defense. So yeah, I don't see Cincinnati really exploding that. So yeah, I'll take the uh, I'll give me the give me the Raiders. Well, the only team that has a worse pass defense in Oakland is Cincinnati. So there you go. <laughs> 6.7 yards allowed per pass attempt for Cincinnati. Oakland is 6.1. So there you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'll lay the points there, too. I'll take the Raiders. I mean, this is a, with Cincinnati, too. It's a, an issue dating back to the last season, maybe even the season before that. Just not a good tackling team. I mean, it just seemed like they sort of shoot themselves in the foot uh, defensively. Uh, offensively, it was pretty clear that they had no, no faith in – in their quarterback this past week. I think Joe Mixon had like 30 carries. He did. Um, which is maybe maybe that's what they should have been doing from the start. I mean, maybe they should have got Joe Mixon more involved somehow. Say, but, uh, uh, but now it's the just, owner of him, I agree. But yeah. now it's just trending too hard in the other direction. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is, it is. It's a lot of points to lean with the Raiders, and I, I'm still not convinced that the Raiders are all that good. Uh, I thought last week was a wow. m very much a, a product of the Chargers' ineptitude in big spots as well. That was not um, a great showing. For but, them. you know, the Raiders, their the defense is, is showing up a little bit, getting better. Um, and also the fact that they're, uh, you know, they a little extra rest for this one, too, by having played on Thursday night last week. So. Yeah. This is a, this line is... So you're, you're taking Oakland. I'm taking the Raiders, Okay. Yes. This yeah. line has to be a trick of some sort. What, uh, again, this is a classic, what am I missing? Like, they should, I think Oakland should win by 30. 
I, I do think the Raiders are actually pretty good. I think you know, John Gruden, for all the flack that he has taken, he probably actually made the right call with the Khalil Mack trade. And in game, he remains a very good head coach. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I look at this one too. They've been very good early in games. Uh, he, he's one of the better game scripters. I think they jump out to an early lead. And again, are you going <laughs> to, are they going to come back? Is Cincinnati going to come back even against uh, that Raiders defense? I don't think so. Uh, he got, I mean, just think of it. You're Cincinnati. He just got, you know, dusted by the Beng- or the Ravens last week. Get embarrassed. He just basically do a whole Lamar Jackson mixtape. The guy played, we have six, uh, six drives. Five of them went for touchdowns. The only other one that didn't was like the halftime or something. The guy, I mean, Lamar Jackson was pulled out of that game early. He was sitting on the sidelines in Oakley. He's just chilling. Like, <laughs> that's embarrassing. And now you have to go to that dump in Oakland and play a road game. That's not fun. Uh, you know, Tyler Boyd got hurt in that game late for Cincinnati. He's been by far their most targeted receiver this season. So you could be going into that without your technically top receiver as well. I just don't understand it. I don't get why this isn't close to like 13. But uh, it feels like a square bet, but I'm going to take the Raiders yep. anyway. I, I, you just look at the Bengals too. They're, they have the worst pass defense. I yeah, mentioned I know. that. Nine yards per yeah. pass attempt. And the words, worst rush defense, 5.2 yards per carry. And they have like one of the fewest, uh, the thir- 30th in yards per carry. They can't run the ball. They can't defend the run. They can't defend the pass. And they have a rookie I, quarterback. I, I, uh, <laughs> Oakland 12th in DVOA overall, which seems even higher than I would have expected. Cincinnati 31st. So I mean, the thing does. with Cincinnati is like we can, the Dolphins get a lot of slack. Maybe not as much now, but I, it feels like with the Dolphins there was. They were fighting at least. Yeah, it feels the Bengals like they're just mailing it in. <laughs> you know, it, or the, I, the, it, maybe I haven't watched a ton of Bengals. They could just be that much worse than the Dolphins, which is saying something. Are they playing each other this year? That'd be great. I think they <laughs> are. Yeah, because the AFC East gets yeah, the AFC right. North. Yeah. Uh, Bengals also second uh, worst turnover differential, minus eleven. So God, they can't. They I can't. They, there's not one thing they do right. Yeah, yeah. that's why I don't understand. Whatever. I think the what was it? It's only at, I think. Let me double check. Sixty-five uh, percent, I think, was the the difference in the the picks. Oh, sixty-two percent on Oakland. They play the Miami Week public. Sixteen. Cincinnati, well, Miami. Barn burn. Miami's gonna be like three and eleven. Miami right might be favored in that game. Oh, They're gonna be a home team. Yeah, very much so. By about a touchdown at this rate. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that was Maybe fun. Maybe we'll pull that one out of the half yeah. of the week. Yeah, no that'll kidding. Be, that'll be a fun one to talk about. Might even be on the marquee. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do locks and upsets. Ricky, who's your lock? Uh, my lock, I'll take the Chiefs, four-point favorites over the Chargers. This is the Mexico City game. Sure. Uh, the Chiefs, that up-tempo offense, they're going to be well-conditioned. They're going to be ready for the elements. Um, but more importantly, I think the Chargers, their offensive line kind of stinks. And the Chiefs defensively, uh, their pass rush improved over the past few weeks. So yeah. uh, I think this Ish. should be higher. I, I think uh, this is somewhat of an overreaction to Kansas City losing again. Um, so, yeah, I like the Chiefs. Uh, uh, what happens if they have to cancel that game again? <laughs> Will they play? We should probably stop scheduling those games. <laughs> <laughs> as far as you know, though, that game's going to be played. Yeah. St- Stadio Still on. Azteca. Still on Azteca. Azteca. All right. All right. I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. They're uh, four point eight. Uh, they're they're playing the Detroit Lions. Lions, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's who they are playing. <laughs> three, three and a half point favorites. I just like the Cowboys coming off of a loss. Uh, they're also averaging 4.8 yards per carry. Detroit's uh, rush defense isn't all that great, allowing nearly 130 yards per game on the ground. So I, I could definitely see Ezekiel Elliott taking over that game, eating clock. Tyron Smith, great offensive lineman. He's still healthy. I don't know what the hell happened in that game against the, the Vikings. It's just that Dak Prescott played a hell of a game. Zeke couldn't run the ball. And Cook just outran him, I guess. I guess that's what it was. They're weird play calling late, too, where they're just, like, running the ball yeah. when they, you know, yeah, no, Prescott's playing out of his mind. Well, talking about the, uh, the Lions, how painful does tiny fractures in your back sound? Mm. Yeah. Bad. Dallas also still the best yards to play differential team in football by half a yard. See, so your, st- your infatuation with that stat but is it's, it's just it going to be your downfall. I, I get it, but, like, and so does the record. Five and four. Yeah, and like the, the Packers place. have a negative one, and they're eight and two. So like, are the Cowboys a better team? Like it's just I don't know. The Cowboys are. An That's an. I'm team just it's an because theory. is that I feel like there's a lot of things that point to them being should be better than that. Yeah, but there's also like a lot of things pointing to them being schmucks. Yeah. Notably, their head coach. That's true. I feel like the uh, 
And they've had injuries too. Like there's some there's some metrics that back them should be better than they actually are. But then like when you take a step back and realize who's pulling the strings and well, who's really know, pulling the, the strings? If you go all the way to the top, yeah, yeah that they're probably right where they should. Yep. Yeah. They've allowed 17 touchdowns this year. It feels like a low number. Yeah. That's two touchdowns per game. Yeah, that's true. We'll have to look into that a little bit more. That's, that's interesting. I don't know why they're 5-4. and four. They just feel like they should be a better team. Because they don't take advantage of the you know, opportunities that they get. And they have the a couple Saints bad game, losses. In the it. Saints game, that was a strong defensive performance. They lost on the road. They lost 12-10. They were the only team that scored a touchdown in that yeah. game. Jets game, that 92-yard pass to Robbie Anderson was in that That's game. That's true. I mean, they got their asses kicked by the Packers, and that was about it. And, so. and yeah, they, they did get 563 total yards in that game. It was garbage. A lot of garbage. Like a tough late, schedule, yeah. all things considered. Yeah, sure. And yeah. the Vikings, that, that's a, that was a good loss. I, I mean, <laughs> well, they, that go. was the one game Zeke could have run the ball. Jason Garrett story. That was a good loss. <laughs> I don't know. I think, the, I, I think they'll beat Detroit and then that New England game. That's, I think they'll give them a tough time. Yeah, they're still not a team I'd want to play in the playoffs. All right, uh, for my lock, I'm going to take uh, Carolina five and a half point favorites over the Falcons. Get this. This doesn't really have anything to do with my pick, but I think it's interesting. This is the Falcons' first game outside this year, like truly outside. They played a couple of retractable teams, but it's their first game uh, on grass outside. Uh, this is also a revenge game for the what Panthers is that thing here. In the sky? It might be their first division game, too. No, I think that, well, they just beat. They just played their first division. Saints. Game. Yeah. yeah. That so was one and all division. Still alive. <laughs> uh, a lot. Five straight division games. Yeah. So they got a lot. They're going to be in the division a lot. Um, like I said, revenge game. Uh, they've won the last three against Carolina, so Carolina's going to want to finally right that wrong. Uh, more importantly, Austin Hooper and Devontae Freeman both got hurt last week. They could be out uh, against the Panthers. Uh, I'm not going to overreact to anything I saw last week with the Falcons. just felt like one of those games where they got right and were like, hey, we won, uh, whereas Carolina took the Packers to, the, to literally to the last inch of that game. I had a chance to put that in overtime. Also, Atlanta can't really protect the quarterback. Seventh highest sack rate allowed going up against a team that leads the league in sacks. So it could be a long day for Matt Ryan. Um, upset. What's your upset? Upset. I'm going to take errors. I don't, I'm not, this isn't like a true upset. I'm just so gonna, you're going to violate the rules of the show? Yeah, I mean, you've done this before, too. Mm. We've done this a few times. I tried to once, and you guys yelled at me, but uh, that's okay. Well, now you, I, you get a mulligan, I get a mulligan. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the errors on the Cardinals against the San Francisco 49ers. 11 and a half points. You, you've been talking about Arizona the last couple of weeks and how they're a good, sneaky team to pick because they're just they're a good young team. I think Kyler Murray's developing as the season goes along, and seventy percent of the bets are coming on Arizona right now, which scares me. Sixty nine percent, I guess. Nice. Uh, it kind of scares me, but I mean, it's pretty amazing that it took Kyler Murray that long to throw an interception. And that yeah, and they it, had that's, what that's four turnovers going in the last week. Yeah. His numbers are really good. Like that's that's been, what I was going like to get into. Three pass they they, the they don't turn the ball over, and I think that that's a big reason why they'll keep this game close. They did on that Thursday night game a couple they weeks did, ago. They did. They did. You know, they don't really do it a lot. No. Okay. Yeah. Really, and Jimmy Andre Garoppolo Cacciatore loves to turn uh, the ball over, as we saw yesterday. Yeah, that's true. The big yeah. Andre Cacciatore in living room debate as to who's going to have a better career, Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson. I, like, I picked Kyler Murray. That was a heated uh, I'd still go with Kyler Murray, but yeah, it's close. What's your upset? My upset, uh, <laughs> the Chicago Bears. Lamar Jackson. Uh, <laughs> six and a half point underdogs against the LA Rams. Uh, I don't know why the Rams are six and a half point favorites over anybody. Rams right can't now. block anyone. Um, the terrible blocking uh, offensive line, serious issues, uh, ranked 30th in pass blocking per pro football focus. I, I just feel like Chicago can pose a lot of the same problems that Pittsburgh did. Yeah. Uh, in which case, so this might be a, one of the a low scored affair again. Uh, in which case, I'll take the points. And actually, Mitchell Trubisky wasn't wasn't all that bad this past week. He looked like a. It is. I will say though. <laughs> well, the revenge game. The revenge game for the Rams here. They went to Chicago last year and got smoked. Remember yeah. that? Jared Goff doesn't like the cold. This one's in L.A. though. So. Oh. I that game hammered the under. Jeez, it's just gonna be punt city. Um, yeah. Man, that stinks. That, that would have been, that that been was supposed to be such a good year. game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Can we yeah. flex out of that? This yeah. is too late. Uh, all right, my upset, I'm going to take Jacksonville, three-point road favorite or road underdogs uh, against Indianapolis. Uh, I think I'm, you know, we're, what are we, 12 weeks into this thing, 11 weeks into this? I think I am ready to bail on the Colts. I will apologize to Jacoby Brissett. I wrote last week in the picks column that 
you know, is there really that big of a drop off from Jacoby Brissett to Brian Hoyer? <laughs> it is. There was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brian Hoyer. I was gonna write something like, you know, sometimes they read what you pick yeah. and then they attack it's, you. It's a really I praise you. It's a I was gonna attack you and then I decided to not attack you. I still don't. I didn't agree with you. I, I, I mean, I, I was wrong. I think I am wrong in general, but I think it's closer than most people say. Sounds like uh, uh, Brissett will be back this week anyway. But you know who else is big back this week? Who? Nick Foles. Oof. Nick Foles coming mm-hmm. back. Didi Westbrook. You know the Gardner Minshew story was nice, but I think Foles. Uh, they built this. You know, this is they. This is what they had in mind when they started building this team. So uh, also Indianapolis, they're just plus one the entire season. Point differential. That's pretty nuts. And I think it's finally starting to find its level. They're five and. It's four. a lot of close games. They, yeah. They, <laughs> So here's another one, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I all of their games have been decided by a score. Every yeah. single one of them. Yeah. I might be that wrong. That game was also horrendous. Yes. Was oh, the other it's thing, too. 4 o'clock slate in general. There's three yeah. games there. All, uh, well, the Packers, Panthers. Yeah, that was all right. And then I guess Rams, Steelers. Was I had that on the second TV, and I was like, every time I looked over, it was yeah. just... Nothing happened. This was thing. standing Well, around. that was the case with the, the Colts Dolphins game too. It just felt like they were just this like the worst game ever. It, it went from like the forty <laughs> yard line to the forty. Yeah. Yard. It was like a game of palm. Right. Like the ball is just going back and forth, but nobody's actually doing anything. Also, I think it is. You're at, we're at a point where you have to just, if you're getting points against Indy, take them because you don't know what Adam Vinatieri's going to do. Yeah. Like, if Adam yeah, Vinatieri like, like wasn't that. the greatest kicker of all time. He'd be cut by now. Oh yeah, yeah. And it seems like they're he's going to cost them preparing a for that situation. Spot. Yeah, they're going to cut him. He's going to come to New England. He's going to kick it. it Game winning field. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that'll be cool. If you're the Patriots, do you want to bring him in? <laughs> um, you know, like, what's his face? Is like pretty good. It's yeah, one uh, game. Uh, you know, uh, Cowboys legend. At the end Nick of the Folk? day, he's Nick a 46 Folk, yeah. year old kicker. I don't, I know, right? don't want to live in the past. It's either. incredible that he made it this long. Like, what if he comes back to New England and he misses a chip shot field goal in the Super Bowl? Oh, my God. <laughs> Just completely tarnishes his legacy. <laughs> <laughs> and just like Lasting full images. circle it's just him yeah. this whole run started by him kicking great and that's just like he started the dynasty Dings now he's right now he ends him. the dynasty yeah. Brady retires well I'd, I'd like to see I just saw the amount of directions that could go <sighs> Colts a lot of kicking issues to their history you go back to Mike Vanderjack getting liquored up and getting <laughs> flim flim flamboyed flambasted flambayed flambayed by <laughs> By Peyton Manning. Great interview. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have you seen that? No. No, oh, let's see, go watch that. All right. Uh, this is the spread. Did you take this picture? No, I didn't take this picture. <laughs> <laughs> Nesson.com's Football Picks Podcast. We'll be back again next week. Thanks for watching and listening and doing everything else. See ya. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>